Welcome to the McTaggart Attack Podcast. I'm Kevin McTaggart. It's Monday, June 28th, 2021. And on Mondays, I just ramble on, vent, complain, talk, whatever, until I feel better, hopefully, by the end of this recording. It's a little something I like to call Kevin's Monday Therapy. So, here we go. What's the fuck is on my mind today? Um, politics. Politics. It's Sunday morning as I'm recording this right now. Behind the scenes for you. Um, I'm just... I get more sick and tired of politics. All the fucking time. Like, I, I just... I don't want to say that I don't care, but I don't care. I mean, it's just, I don't care because I just feel like it just seems to me that the politicians don't have our, truly don't have our best interests in heart. They have their own interests at heart. I was thinking about this yesterday when I was at the Subaru place getting my car worked on. Was writing some stuff and was thinking about how, like, I think I, I, to be honest, I think I might be stealing this from something I heard on G.W. Foley's podcast. Um, Foley Kills the Podcast, available on YouTube. Go find it. Anyway, but it's a, but listening to him talk about it gave me this thought that, like, We've elected these politicians. We chose them. So it's our fault if they suck. Sure. But. It doesn't. They don't act as though we chose them. You know what I mean? They they act. Rather self-righteous. Like. Like. They work for us. We don't work for them. And some of these people have been there so damn long and have made millions of dollars off of this. It's it's completely stupid. You know, like, we, we chose them to be in this position. We chose them. And it's just, it's just ridiculous. Let me get my notebook so I can tell you what the fuck I was trying to say. Because I can't really think... Of the exact way that I worded it yesterday. But, like, yeah, I'm just... Yeah. Um, right. We elected them. We chose them. And they act all high and mighty. Act like we serve them, but we don't serve them. They serve us. They're supposed to help us. And I feel like they have no idea what we need for them to actually help us. And it's just frustrating on many fucking levels that these stupid assholes just don't care about what what we really want. Like and it's just they spend so much time arguing with each other about everything like there's not going to be any compromise there's no compromise there's no there's nothing it's it's like the compromising shouldn't be public that's for sure i think that's part of the problem social media is such an awful thing when used improperly and it's definitely used improperly when it comes to politics it's it's like the veil has been ripped off and <laughs> everybody's an asshole. You know, I it's 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 just frustrating to me. Like there's this stuff about the infrastructure deal and like people are reneging on it now. And I'm like, I, I don't give a sh- damn about all of this. Tell us when the deal has been done. Because like all of this stuff that happens until the deal is signed is just incendiary 
bullshit that just makes us so angry at each other and then it gets resolved and we're still angered at each other because the world is so fucking divisive. It's just stupid. I just, I just, I just hate politics. And I just, it, it, it's just politicians. Yes, they, they're way too overpaid. Something needs to be done with that, but nothing's going to be done with that because the people that determine how much they get paid are the people that are getting paid that much. So, they like for us to be divisive. We're much more easily controlled when we're divided against each other. I was watching some of the Alexandra Pelosi documentary, and that's something she talks about. She talks to these people that have, like, these different differing views from her. She talks to some coal miners. She talks to some people who are against climate change. She talks to some people who didn't, not against it, but didn't really believe in it. And just it's just... It got their points of view, and it was all very interesting. I mean, we're all human beings. We're all living on the same planet. We're all in the same country. And it's like, we're just, we want to kill each other because we disagree with each other. Like, even with the politicians, like our new favorite politician, Marjorie Taylor Greene. I saw yesterday that she wants to lock up AOC. And she said she's not from this country, when she's clearly from this country. She's born here, I believe. Anyway. But it's like, she's just one example. It seems like the politicians want to lock up anybody that doesn't agree with them. And that is the wrong way to go. If someone disagrees with you, then you should talk to each other and try to resolve your differences. Not try to lock them up just because they have different beliefs than you. That's not what America is all about. That's that's not what we're all about. That's not what it's. We're in a country of different beliefs and cultures and 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 people and skin colors and all this stuff, and we have to get along together. And it's as if we've lived in this way for so long that we're now like starting to be a against each other just because we believe different things. We want to lock each other up because we don't believe in the same things. And it's just frustrating. You can't lock someone up just because they have a different belief than you do. Even though you think they're wrong and they think you're wrong. You can't like just say, oh, lock them up because ah. it's like it's like it's like the GOP is going with the whole professional wrestling strategy of politics. Because it works, I guess. It gets people riled up. Cutting promo, saying, saying incendiary things like locking them up. Kick them out of the country. Get the hell out of here. Hang them. Shit like that. And we shouldn't be saying stuff like that. And it's like, there's no chance of us ever working together if all we're going to do is want to lock each other up because we have different views. How we refuse to um, get along with each other. We refuse to negotiate with each other. We refuse to talk to each other. Like the bipartisanism is is like a rare thing. It's like a big deal when we act bipartisan. It shouldn't be a big deal when we act bipartisan. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be a big deal when we act bipartisan. It's just stupid. It's fucking stupid. It's all fucking stupid. We're so fucking stupid. It's just, it's just dumb. It's ridiculous. I fucking hate it. I was watching AEW last night. And, um, uh, here's, here's a big pet peeve of mine with AEW. Like, there's one thing that I hate about AEW, okay? Like, um, whenever any of Taz's wrestlers are in a match, Taz doesn't go to ringside. He goes up to the announce booth to join the three commentators at the announce booth. And he commentates with them. 
Don Callis does the same thing when, when Kenny Omega wrestles. He's on the announce booth. And he'll come down to interfere if he has to. But it's like, I just think it's stupid. Look, you already have three people at the AEW Dynamite announce booth. Why do we need to add, why do we need the manager to speak for them? I know that Taz is a commentator, but he does commentary on AEW Dark. We don't really need to hear what he has to say. Just be at ringside. And, and, and just be at ringside and, and just try to interfere that way. You know, don't, don't just commentate. You're an awful manager if all you do is sit at the fucking announce table. Just Callis and Taz should just sit at the announce should should stand at ringside and cheat properly, act like actual managers or whatever the hell you want to call your position, mouthpieces, advocates, whatever the f- fuck you call yourselves. I don't fucking care, but it's just it's just one thing that annoys me about AEW. And, and trust and don't get on me about hating on AEW. Don't call me a WWE supporter because like. There's stuff I hate about WWE. There's stuff I hate about AEW. There's stuff I like about WWE. And there's stuff I like about AEW. I like them both. I want them both to succeed. I want all wrestling promotions to succeed. But if there's stuff that happens in professional wrestling, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to... I'm going to say things. I'm just going to say things. That's all. Fuck. It's just... Just aggravating. What the fuck else is pissing me off today? I've been frustrated learning my new job. and I don't like some of it. But I don't want to... Like... It, it, and it might happen that I might not have to do it anymore, but... I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I want to... I don't want to be deemed a quitter. You know, but like, I've tried it. And it's really frustrating. And there might be somebody else who wants to do it more than me. So I'm more than entitled to have them go ahead and do it. You know, I... I, But... I don't know how I feel about that. I want to keep trying to do it so maybe it'll be less frustrating I just have to figure out the guy that used to do it said something to me Friday that was interesting just figure out a way for it for me to be less frustrating and I don't know if that's possible but I guess it's worth trying to figure that out so we'll see I don't know but I mean, it pays more than any job I've had before. So I guess with more pay comes more frustration. I guess. I guess that's true. I guess that's the way it is. I suppose. <sighs> I don't know. Um, what else has been on my mind? Uh, I went... Uh, Yesterday, I, Saturday, I went to get my car worked on, get new brakes and stuff like that. And then I drove uh, over to Middlebury, Vermont, because um, that's the Marquee Theater. That's where I do, that's where I love to perform stand-up comedy. And they're open at full capacity now, so shows should be happening again there sometime in the near future. But, um, so I went there because I saw that they had some new menu items. I wanted to try the buffalo chicken tacos. So, so I went there and, and said hi to some people and ate the buffalo chicken tacos and they're delicious. And, um, they're new menu items, so they're not like specials or anything. So I'm looking forward to that. They also have some Carolina barbecue pork tacos that I think... I'll also be interested in because I like buffalo and I like buff- barbecue. So those two things are two delicious things that I I enjoy um, 
having. I feel like there's something on the tip of my tongue that I wanted to talk about today. I didn't really know what the hell else, what the hell else is going on with me. Um, what's going on? Uh, oh, oh yeah, I remember now. So, um, earlier this week, uh, defensive player for the Las Vegas Raiders, Carl Nassib, came out of the closet as a homosexual, because that's what you do when you come out of the closet. And um, it was great. He got applauded for it and everything. I hope they don't cut him. I hope they don't cut him. I don't think the Raiders will cut him because I think he's a good player. I'm not exactly sure, but... Like, I do like one thing that he said that, like, he wishes that at some point coming out of the closet isn't a thing. I personally wish it it was never a thing. I, I hate to do it. Because I think it's... <laughs> it's a shame that it is a thing. You know, it's a shame that it's a thing. I just, it's it's something that I still even struggle to talk about on my podcast. But, like, I have, I have come out of the closet already in a podcast episode. Go look up episode 49 from a couple years ago. I was really angry, and I just let everything fly, and one of the things that flew was that. And people listened to that episode. Hmm. That's how a lot of people found out. And I'm like, that's fine. But I'm really... My, my, my stance on it is that just that, like, if people know, that's great. If they don't know, that's great. I mean, I, I really... It, I don't want it to be a big deal. <laughs> there have been some things that scare me about coming out of the closet. Like, I don't want to have to be a fan of the village people now. And then, uh, one thing that's definitely kept me from doing it, or even considering it, was that movie from the 90s, In and Out, with Kevin Kline, when he got outed by one of his students when he didn't even know that he was. It just, that movie, I guess, was a good idea, but, like, nowadays, I'm just like, it, it was definitely a factor in me not wanting to let anyone know. Because it was just, I, I'm not a good dancer. So I didn't know if I had to do that. But it's like, I think that's a disgusting stereotype about gay people, you know? Like, I'm not into the girly, girly stuff. I'm not feminine by any means. I'm not any of that. And it's just, it's it's hard to want to come out of the closet because I, I don't want to have to start talking a certain way, you know? I just, I just, I just don't, you know? I shouldn't have to. I'm still just me. Like, it's like, I, I hate labels. Like, I, I'm not saying get rid of all labels, but just like, my name's Kevin. That's, that's my label. And it's, it's just, I know this episode sounds like a struggle because I'm struggling to talk through this, but if you're still listening at this point, thank you. But it's just, it's just frustrating to have to like deal with that. It is something that like, I feel like holds me back from a lot of things. Um, It is something I think that bothers me that I don't let anyone know. Or I do let them know, but it's like, I haven't let enough people know. I haven't let some of the right people, the parents, haven't told the parents. But they probably already know. But maybe I'll just show them a stand-up comedy video and they'll, they'll figure it out. 
or they won't think you're dumb, or they'll kick me out of the house, which at this point I think would be fine. I think if I do come out to anybody and they want to never speak to me again, I'm cool with that. There was a time when I was like, I didn't want anyone to like stop talking to me, you know, where I cared about other people's opinions, but I'm at the age now where I just don't give a shit about your opinion. So if I tell you something about myself and you don't like it, that's fine. You don't have to talk to me anymore. And I don't have to talk to you anymore. But it's just hard. And yeah, I just I, I struggle whenever Pride Month comes up. And I just, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's something I need to say, but don't need to say. I've kind of. I don't. I just don't like to make a big deal out of it. It shouldn't be a big deal. I don't care. I don't care who you're fucking, so you really shouldn't care who I'm fucking. As long as it's legal, I don't care. And that's the bottom line. If you smell with the McTaggart Attack podcast, is cooking.